All right, so I've already done a bad job of following my own rules. Uh, it's just too fun to play with, so I already turned it on because uh, the idle was so bad it actually bothered me enough to do it. And it's still so weird to just see a carburetor basically correct itself. Um, it just feels wrong. So let's, let's turn this thing off and on and just take a look. Totally wild. All right, so we're maintaining a good idle RPM, good idle AFR. Let's turn this thing off now. You heard the idle instantly drop. Both, we wanted it both. And then we're gonna pick idle RPM. And you can just hear it take off right away. And we're right back to a good idle RPM. And if we pick idle RPM, it will do, it will target an idle RPM within an AFR range. Not to mention, finally having a speedometer in this truck is awful handy. Howdy my friends and welcome to the channel today. I'm Luke, Thunderhead289, here on YouTube. Boy, it's a scorcher today. But uh, today we're going to do a little carb cheater uh, driving test and benchmarking test here. Uh, I could use the Maverick, but it's my daily driver, so that's kind of cheating because I have that car exceptionally dialed. If you're familiar with me, you're very familiar with the Maverick. Again, my daily driver every day to work, so, you know. Unless I'm super lazy, I probably have it tuned pretty good, and I can confirm that I do, you know. So we're going to use my dad's uh, 6968 F100 here, and uh, I've never tuned it with a wideband or anything. Um, pretty competent carb tuner, you know. Uh, not that I need a wideband to tune something, but we'll just see how far off, you know, a trained ear and a tra trained hand can be in comparison to, you know, if you have all the telemetry in the palm of your hand and, you know, some of that adaptive features that Carb Cheater has. So with that, let's jump right in. Now, if you remember this truck from our last video, it's my dad's F100 here. It's got a 302 up front, all original, more or less, four barrel carburetor, Petronics ignition, you know, but more or less pretty stock. Has a four speed top loader swapped in, uh, in replacement of the three speed on the column. So, does pretty good. We'll fire it up here. I'm trying to do this with one hand, always an adventure. There we go. Hasn't been started for about a week. Fires up pretty good. Now, in my opinion, Carb Cheater is pretty awesome. Um, I've been a tuner for a long time, and basically I made something that uh, handles all the variability that even a seasoned carb tuner will experience. Um, it kind of mitigates all that and gives you a lot more consistent cruising AFR, idle characteristics, and, um, you know, I really like it. But what Carb Cheater isn't is it's not a Band-Aid for a super poorly tuned carburetor. Uh, it's not a fix for a broken carburetor, and it's not some automatic thing where if you don't want to do any work, you put it in and it does everything for you. Now you can see everything on your screen as far as critical engine tuning telemetry, and I highly encourage you to utilize that to get a really effective tune on your carb, and again, let Carb Cheater handle all that variability. But one thing I haven't really talked about with Carb Cheater is all the auxiliary features on it. Um, this was a community project, so we all worked together to kind of throw things in this that we all really want it together. So with that, um, here's a fun one. We'll check out the ignition lock. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go to our Carb Cheater app. And again, the phone doesn't have to be connected for it to run. It's been doing its thing the whole time. This is just your user interface. Okay, so when you connect, it's automatically gonna jump to the gauge screen here. There we go. So that's all well and good. So the ignition lock, here we go. You heard the engine immediately shut down. And with this armed, the engine will not start. It'll light off and immediately shut down. Now I can't really make any claims on the ignition lock. Um, use your imagination and use it for what you think it might be useful for. So we're gonna turn it back off here. Okay. 
now there we go we're back running again so one more time here engine idling cut is on engine will not start it might pop off but it will not start as soon as it sees rpm it's going to shut you down okay so now we're going to turn this back off disarmed going to cycle the key there we go a little rich from cranking with no ignition but there you go we're running again so again use your imagination pretty handy little thing so let's talk about some of the settings here especially idle because we're sitting here warming up anyway and uh with card cheater we're doing a lot with a little which is usually something you don't really want to brag about but in this case it's pretty nice all right so taking a look at our user interface here you can navigate around with the mode button it'll highlight your different settings but let's start from the beginning here so when you connect with the app you're going to be here it's going to auto route you to the main gauge screen i think it's the most handy one that you're going to use most often but if you want to navigate to settings while you're running here so here's your live data readout and here is your target adjustment so we'll address idle right now and so basically there's two ways to adjust idle and this can be kind of confusing to people again we're doing a lot with a little here now I put a lot of power in the user's hand to decide what they want to do, okay? Um, not something that folks typically do when they manufacture a product, but you know, I'm just some yahoo that works a day job and, and made this thing, so I can kind of do whatever I want to some degree. Alright, so for the sake of explanation here, I have auto-tune off. You see we're idling away. This is your live data. These are your settings. So we're going to turn auto-tune on. Yes, we want to turn it on. We accept all the legal stuff. Idle only, cruise only, or cancel. We're gonna use cancel as we want to have adaptability at idle and cruise. There's some very special scenarios where you might only want it idle or only want it at cruise, but it's pretty rare. So we're gonna hit cancel. So now we're gonna target an idle AFR. Okay, there we go. So our trimming came online here and we're trimming towards this target air fuel ratio. So pretty simple as that. Um, it works pretty good, as you can see. You know, we jumped up from 12 to where we're at a good, clean AFR at this point. Now you actually have two options, again, for idle control. You can target an idle RPM within an AFR range. So between 12 and a half to your setting here, you can uh, basically say, hey, I want you to idle at 800 RPM. And if it can do it with the AFR within that range, it'll do it. You know, if it hits one of those thresholds, it'll stop. Um, and this is pretty handy for some manual vehicles, uh, special cases again. Otherwise, AFR works really good. Doesn't really move your RPM around too much, but in the case that it does, you can target idle RPM as your, your primary target and AFR as your secondary versus just your AFR only. Again, I put a lot of the capability in the user's hands, so you know, you can make a lot of these decisions yourself. All right, enough BSing around. Let's hit the road here. Oh, I'm gonna have to put the phone down, I forgot. This is manual steering, and I don't wanna hit my tree. All right, this is kinda hard to see in the sun. This is a hard thing to record, all right? The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn auto-tune mode off. Now, the first thing I want you to do before you ever turn auto-tune on driving down the road is I want you to leave it off and get a feel for what your carburetor does just on its own. Remember, this is a tuning assist. It's not like fuel injection. So use the data that you have at your hands that you've never had before to effectively tune your carburetor. And again, let Carb Cheater handle all the anomalies. But right now we're cruising down the road at 12, so that's pretty rich, but that's super typical of very light throttle scenarios where when I'm more into the throttle, AFR will be correct. Carb Cheater will allow us to have this in an ideal AFR all the time, which is a cleaner running engine and, uh, you know, more efficient engine and all that good stuff that, uh, you know, typical fuel injection, what you see with it. All right, we're sitting here in idle, fully warmed up. We're a little bit on the rich side. You can't tell, this is the highest reading on the vacuum gauge and just look how rich it is. You know, we're in the 12s. So 
hit the road here. See how good of a carb tuner I am without all the gauges. And it turns out that I'm not that bad of a carb tuner. We're hanging right around Stoic 14, right around 15, and we're doing pretty good. And this is with auto tune off at the moment. So, you know, someone who isn't as competent as I am, they can use this gauge display and get their AFR and carb tuned really well. But, you know, I have like 15 years of experience doing this to be able to get to this point. But obviously we're doing pretty good just as it is. So despite the AFR being extremely clean, you know, now I don't have to wonder about it because I can see it all right in front of my face. Any anomalies, off idle transitions that don't feel right, you can literally see all of it and it's far easier to tune. You know, I work, you guys work. Uh, we just don't have time to play guest and check for days on end, you know. Uh, when you only get the weekend, you prefer to have fun with it. And this allows you to do that and make carb tuning a lot more fun. Now even me being a good carb tuner, here's where a carb cheater tends to come in handy. So we're going down the hill here like 13 and a half. Carb cheater would snap that back up to 14.7 back to stoic so it's always a good AFR good clean most efficient AFR so if you're ever dipping rich it'll save you which carburetors tend to dip rich much more than they tend to dip lean my apologies here because I'm just one guy and it's hard to record this whole thing by hand but uh you know folks say my carburetor runs great tuned it by ear whatever you know Carburetors, when they go lean, um, it's very obvious, you know, bucking, stumbling, um, especially with this, you can see it right on the gauge, but you can feel that. But where it's not super obvious with carbs is where they're rich, okay? So when they go rich, here we got the, got the shaky hand 1000 going on here, let's see what we can do. All right, there we go. So when they go rich, you know, they can go pretty darn rich and the engine will seemingly run fine, okay? But what you're doing, you're watching cylinder walls, um, your efficiency is going out the window, and just a lot of negatives that could easily be avoided. And naturally, those are the things I fixate on with Carb Cheater and what it does a really good job of adapting to. Now at a glance here, someone might say this truck is idling absolutely great. It's got the highest reading on the vacuum gauge um, when I set it and everything, but if you take a look at the telemetry, it's a lot more rich than one would think. So this is hard on engines, you know, this is washes cylinder walls, you know, uh, it's obviously not very efficient and overall affects the longevity of an engine. People think carburetor engines don't run very long. There's no difference between a carburetor engine and a fuel injected engine internally, mechanically. They should be able to get to the same mileage as a fuel injected vehicle. Now, you know, I've been running the carb cheater on the Maverick for quite a few miles here and every time I change the oil it's extremely clean and everything looks good where this truck has been you know seems like it has dirty oil in the past so I'm starting to see that we have a rich idle now if you're familiar with running a wideband you actually know that this AFR will walk around all the time depending on conditions um, different variability outside temperature is it raining is it humid you know that all affects your idle AFR. And so with Carb Cheater, you can enable that and basically it will trim your AFR on the fly and keep it always the AFR you want it to be. So I've had enough of this 12 to one stuff. So we're gonna turn our Carb Cheater on. I accept, cancel all this idle AFR target. Go back to mode here. And there we go, we're idling with a much cleaner air fuel ratio and not being hard on the engine. Now, as I said, I'm a pretty good carb tuner. And, you know, I've been doing this for 15 years, so that's not like a flex statement. It's like, if you do something for 15 years, you gotta be pretty good at it. One would surely think. And so, not that that's always true, but you know, one would surely hope. So anyway, let's just see how good we did with things. And so we added a data log feature so we're gonna start our data log here. So our little data log button. And when it's flashing green, it's running. And now we're gonna ram this thing through the gears pretty good and see how it does with the power circuit and enrichment circuit and all of that. So this is probably the most important aspect of carb tuning and where 
carb cheater and all the telemetry really shines. So the most dangerous point in engine tuning is high load, okay? And so if you go way lean, um, you're gonna put a hole in a piston real easy. If you're going rich, you're leaving a ton of power on the table and uh, you know, washing the cylinder walls. Also bad things, there's a narrow window of success you're going for. And again, with all the telemetry, we can see that. So let's wind this truck up and see where we're at. Without this, you'd have no idea where you're at, largely. stay on the throttle and not worry about it because I can see that the whole time. Now boy, I tell you, this thing gets out of the way good for an old truck, but the Maverick, it can really scoop compared to this thing. Granted, this has the stock Y pipe into a less than two inch single exhaust pipe. It goes all the way back behind the axle. So pretty restrictive. So I'd be really curious how we do with car tuning given that scenario. At least it's quiet though. You go for a drive with your wife and you're not mad by the time you get to dinner. All right, so here we are parked. We want to review our data log we just took. And you can name these data logs. Um, I didn't because I know which one I'm on here, but that was data log five, pulling through the gears. You can save up to five data logs and before they start overriding themselves and they're up to five minutes a piece. So there we go. We can see where we were shifting on the data log. And this is kind of hard to record on a phone to a phone here, but you can actually email yourself this data log and share it around. You know, people can go through it. Really nice because you can reflect back on what happened. And I'll leave the link to this data log below on this video. So you can pull up this very data log and see this truck going through the gears and what it did. So... You can wheel around the time spectrum and everything if you pull this up. So you can really hone in on different parts of the data log. You see there, start time, end time, and update graph. And it kind of gives you your key and what's going on there. So I tried to make a data log that's really easy to interpret. And in my opinion, I think we definitely achieved that. And again, uh, you can pull up your data log remotely. Uh, not You don't have to use your phone or your app or anything. Once you send yourself the link, you know, you can look at this as many times as you want. All right, my friends, I think that'll do it for me today with our little informal walkthrough tutorial overview of Carb Cheater. And the whole thing's kind of funny. You know, I've been tuning carbs for 10, 15 years. Um, that doesn't sound like a long time, I guess, but I'm not that old of a chap. And Carb Cheater, in a way, like I've made something that's devaluing my own capability. Because now, with all this in the palm of your hand, uh, I mean, you can dial a carburetor amazingly well. Um, there's no more guesswork, uh, tomfoolery with all that, which is what everyone hates about carburetors. And then, you know, second off, the lack of consistency. Carb Cheater itself goes a long way to curtail all those weird things associated with that. And, um, you know, it's just easy, straightforward, doesn't take a lot of time to tune a carb cheater when you have, or to tune a carburetor when you have Carb Cheater at your disposal. So with that, my friends, I'll quit flapping my jaw here. I'll leave a link below to the data log we just ran, um, a link to the Carb Cheater website if you want to pick one of these up for yourself. Uh, and again, you know, I appreciate all you guys that weighed in on the development of this project. It's, it's been a really fun community project. And hopefully this, you know, by putting the power back in your hands to make informed tuning decisions, you can much more easily enjoy your classic ride and drive it every day. Because personally, they're dead nuts reliable if you have them set up well. At least that's been my experience, and I'm sure that will also be your experience. So with that, see you guys for the next one.